Good morning, everyone. Please stand. I want to welcome you to this, our service on the 20th day of December, the fourth Sunday of Advent. A special welcome to those who are joining us now via live stream. Our opening sentence, Mary said, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to his word. Let us pray. Go before us, O Lord, in this our act of worship, in our lives and in all that we do with your most gracious favor. Further us, dear God, with your continual help, that in all our works, having begun in you, they will continue in you and end in you, that we may glorify your holy name and finally by your mercy attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our processional hymn, O come, all ye faithful. Friends, as we begin our service on this fourth Sunday of Advent, candles one by one, reminding us of the light of our Lord that is coming more and more 
into our world. We begin our service with the lighting of the Advent candle. Thanks be to God. Today we light the fourth candle of Advent, the candle of joy. When the angel Gabriel told Mary that a special child would be born to her, she was filled with joy. She sang a song that began with the words, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Just as the birth of Jesus gave joy to her mother, so his presence in the world gave joy to those who had none before. He healed them and gave them hope and peace when they believed in him. From hope, peace, and love grows joy. We light the candle of joy to remind us that when Jesus is born in us, we have joy and that through him, there will be everlasting joy on earth. Joy is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the joy we find in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, God for the joy you give us. We ask that as we wait for all your promises to come true and for Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your joy with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, who chose the Virgin Mary, full of grace, to be the mother of our Lord and Savior, now fill us with your grace that we in all things may embrace your will and with her rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Please be seated for the readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from the Word of God written in the second book of Samuel. Chapter 7, verse 1 to 11, and verse 16. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in the tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nedan. Go and tell the servant David, the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? The house brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I've been moving about in a tent in the tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel? I commanded the shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus shall you say to my servant David, Thus said the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I've been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will, make you, I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more. As formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated as I read for you Psalm number 89. Psalm 89, reading from verse 1 to 4 and verse 19 to 26. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David the servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, 
is now and shall be forever. Amen. Please remain seated for the second reading from Holy Scripture. A reading from the Word of God, written in the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 16, verses 25 to 27. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand now as we listen to our gradual hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, to be immediately followed by ancient words. Please stand. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man of the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor. in your womb and Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne 
of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of Christ. Friends, let us pray. Gracious and living God, we pause in your presence to give you thanks, O Lord, for this day and for having gathered us together in this place to worship you, O Lord, by the power of your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, as we gather in your presence, we pray that you would bless your words to our hearts change and transform our lives make us a people ready to say yes to your will and to your word in our lives we ask and we pray these things through christ our lord may i speak to you in the name of god who is father son and holy spirit amen please be seated Friends, I want to share with you this morning some words from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 38. Luke, chapter 1 and verse 38. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. I have a friend and colleague in ministry who, whenever asked to do anything in the service of God or for the service of the people of God, it's a simple, kind favor. And he would always unlimited. He would always. Yes. And as he explained, the reason for this was simple. He said, if you generally say yes when called upon to provide some service for another, to do something to help someone, then when the time comes to say no, not only will people more readily understand, but they will know that you genuinely cannot do it. Now, what is at work here, I believe, is the development of one's generosity muscles, if you will. But specifically in the example of my colleague, I believe that it is the development of a spirit of generosity with regard to one's faithful obedience to the will of God. That is, our obedience and our willingness to say yes to God, to say, not my will, but yours be done. In our scripture readings for this fourth 
Sunday of Advent. From Samuel and the psalmist all the way through to Luke and to Paul's letter to the Romans. We are told again at this time of year the story of God's faithfulness. His faithfulness to his people. And specifically, his faithfulness to establish his kingdom. His rule. His authority. His throne. Which we are told are from everlasting to everlasting. It is a kingdom without end. And friends, God has established in Christ and is establishing his kingdom rule in our lives and indeed in all creation. And this is a kingdom rule which will have no end. But in today's reading from Luke's gospel, we are reminded again of how God's kingdom rule comes to bear specifically on the life of a young girl, Mary, from a little town in Galilee called Nazareth. We are told that the angel Gabriel was sent to her by God with the news that she had found favor with God. And with even more startling news that she would give birth to a son. That she was to call him Jesus. That he would be the son of the Most High. And that he would, in fact, be the long-awaited descendant of King David. That he would be their long-awaited Messiah. Now just imagine for a moment, right? I mean, this not only was this encounter with Gabriel and this message perplexing in and of itself, but Mary wondered, and she wondered out loud, how could this be? How could this prophetic message from the angel Gabriel actually come into being, actually be reality in my life and in this world? And so this was a crisis moment for Mary, in the truest sense of the word. It was intensely difficult to wrap her mind around. It was deeply troubling. I mean, she was a virgin engaged to be married. What would her fiancé say? What would their families say? It was dangerous for her within her community to be unmarried and to be found to be pregnant. And of course, as we know from the scriptural account, it was also dangerous for this child that she was carrying on account of those who would want to murder this prophesied king. That's why we celebrate the Feast of the Innocents in the early part of our church calendar, right? This was a crisis moment for Mary in which an important decision had to be made. And the accounts of scripture resound with Mary's decision in the affirmative. Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Now friends, I suspect, it's not recorded in scripture, but I suspect that this was not the first time that Mary had shown deference to the will of God and said, yes. Especially if it was something that seemed difficult or challenging to do. I suspect that there were many occasions previously in Mary's young life when she gave, and no doubt gave willingly and gave generously of her time, gave of her economic means, gave of her abilities, especially so in order to remain faithful and obedient in accordance with the Jewish law as it pertained to worship. And so, not unlike my colleague, even though Mary was chosen and had been chosen by God's grace and favor alone, it had nothing to do with Mary meriting this. God chose her. And even though God chose her based on his grace and his favor alone, I suspect that this capacity for generosity, this willingness to say yes to the will of God, is something that Mary had developed over time through her faithful obedience to all that God had called her to do and all that God had called her to be. This wasn't something new to her. 
As I thought about this capacity for generosity in Mary and also in my colleague, this willingness to say yes to the will of God, I thought about that, that famous song by uh, Shirley Caesar. Some of you will know of it. Yes, Lord, yes. Should I sing it? <laughs> I knew you would say yes. <laughs> it goes, <laughs> I'll say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. You know it? Right? That was a song. And I wonder, how is God calling and inviting you today, wherever you may be, to say yes? How may, be, how may he be inviting you to, to be a, a bearer, a means of his present and coming kingdom rule of peace and justice in this world, wherever he has placed you? Perhaps God is calling you wherever you may be now just to say yes to his presence more fully in your lives. To say yes to this new life. Yes to him being born in you today. Because the truth is that this wonderful and exciting journey with him in this life, it both continues and begins with a simple yes, Lord. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. That's how this journey begins. And friends, this invitation, this opportunity to say yes to the will of God, it is a great gift. It didn't have to be, but it is a great gift. Like that popular slogan says, it is that gift that keeps on giving in a good way, right? It is that gift that keeps on giving, and I'm certain that it is not by accident that a gift like this, an invitation to say yes, I'm not surprised that it is connected in the way that it is in our gospel with the conception of the Christ child. You see, to receive the news that a new human life has been conceived is a gift in the sense that this life did not have to be. It wasn't there before. But now it is. It is a gift. And those who receive that gift with gladness very soon discover that a child, and by extension human life in general, is that gift that just keeps on giving. Right? Every day is a new experience. Every day is a new adventure. You have the opportunity to relate to this being who is other than yourself in a ways that are free, in ways that are unanticipated but yet familiar. I can do new things and I can say things in a new way. I can relate to you in different ways but yet you still know that it's me. You have the opportunity to create memories. You have the opportunity to share, to to grow together, to look towards the future together. Your life is made different. You grow, you change, you adapt in ways that you could not have were it not for this other human being in your life. I mean, think about who you might be without the presence of those around you in your life and who they have helped you to become. In other words, we are given the gift of our new lives to the extent that we share our lives in relationship with other people. That's how we were made, to be relational creatures. That is how we receive the new selves that we are becoming. And of course, all of this is so much more profound and true to the extent that we, like Mary, say, Yes, to Christ's life being born within us. Christ gives us the gift 
of himself, conceived within ourselves through the power of his holy and life-giving spirit. And this gift of Christ in us is truly the gift that keeps on giving. Remember Jesus said, those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. He says, the water that I will give will become in them a spring of water, a source, gushing on eternal life. And so every day with this God is a new experience. Every day is a new adventure as we journey with him, as we share life together with him. We are given the gift of our new selves to the extent that we say yes to him in this life and sharing life with him. So Jesus says, those who find their life, if you try to find your life some other way, you will lose it. But those who lose their life for my sake will find it. When you give your life away and allow God to come in and take over and take control, then you find your life. And in this age of Advent, I pray that God may grant us the grace to live with him in this life, don't wait till you get to your deathbed and figure you're going to say, Oh Lord, please forgive me and just slide into heaven like you're sliding into home plate. I think God wants us to act with more integrity than that. May he grant us the grace to say yes to living with him in this life. To learn how to live with and among our fellow human beings as those who are agents of his coming rule of peace and justice in our world. Let there be peace on earth. Let there be justice on earth. Let it begin with me. Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. And let us now, in the words of the Apostles' Creed, reaffirm the faith of our baptism in this God who comes among us and invites us to say yes to his presence in our lives, that he may truly become the center and fullness of all that we are called to be. As we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, please kneel as you are able as we pray. Let us join our voices with Mary, who celebrates God's greatness and sings of God's blessings for all who are poor and oppressed. Eternal God, we pray for the world 
that are wearing ways may be overturned, even now, through the birth, death, and resurrection of Christ. For nothing is impossible with you. We pray for the mission of your church. In the Anglican Church in Canada, we pray for the Reverend Dr. Eileen Scully, Director and the staff of the Faith, Worship, and Ministry. Shayla McGlynn, Youth Ministries, Animator, and for the Reverend Canon, Dr. Scott Sharman, Animator for the Ecumenical and Interfaith Relations. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for the Reverend Paul Gers, Assistant to the National Bishop, Justice and Ecumenical and Interfaith Relations. And for Gretchen Peterson, Assistant to the National Bishop, Youth and Leadership. In our own Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for mission agencies and their ministry throughout the Anglican community, including the Mother's Union around the world. God our Father, we pray that we may proclaim the good news of the age as we rejoice in the gift of our Savior. We pray for all who suffer, that we may feed the hungry and lift up the lowly through the power of your holy and life-giving spirit. We remember in particular the following members of this congregation and their caregivers. Alton. Alton. Courtney. Courtney. Thelma. Thelma. Maureen. Maureen. Joe. Joe. George. George. Clifton. Clifton. Kathleen. Kathleen. Reuben. Reuben. Nellie. Nellie. Andrew. Andrew. Carmen. Carmen. Rita. Rita. Tourette. Tourette. Felicia. Felicia. Fitzroy. Fitzroy. Ian. Ian. Pat. Pat. Paul. Paul. Ethel. Ethel. Joan. Joan. Doreen. Doreen. Rima. Rima. Hyacinth. Hyacinth. And Pauline. Pauline. We pray for those now on our hearts and minds, for those who have asked the prayers of this congregation, especially Thelma Chasto, Evelyn Greenwich, Ruthlyn Hoyt, Iyabo Ordenduran, Diane Besessar, Joyce Welcome, and Chassie Andrew Berensingu. We pray for your creation, that we may safeguard its well-being from generation to generation to your honor and glory. For those who visit with us week by week, we give you thanks. We pray for those joining us now, either in person or online. Meet them even now in their area of need. Draw to this community of faith, children, youth, and families. Let the light of your countenance shine upon them, that they may sense your presence near, and even now may receive your blessings in this moment. We pray for our angel tree families. Whom, are, whom we are privileged to serve this year. We pray for the parents who are incarcerated, for their children celebrating Christmas apart from them, and for their caregivers. Let the peace and justice of your reign be born anew in their circumstances this day. We pray for the vulnerable and the ignored in society and in our community. We pray for our friends whom we are privileged to serve week by week at our Saints Cafe, and for those who work diligently to render care and mercy. Help us to serve them as you have served us. We remember before you those who have died, especially the deceased from this congregation. We pray for those who will die today, that they may rest with you eternally in your kingdom where there is no end. Through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we magnify you, almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us therefore confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. We pray together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Forgive us all that has passed. Have mercy upon us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, please stand now for the greeting of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. as we continue to prepare to celebrate the Eucharist on this day, I invite you now during this time of the offertory to come forward uh, observing the social distancing and to place your offering in the offering basket as you are able. I also invite our friends online if you'd like to take this time to make an offering uh, to do so. You may visit our parish website and find uh, the connection for e-transfer and also PayPal if you'd like to support this work of ministry. We now listen to our offertory hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. <laughs>
hands, let us now, together in the words of the prayer over the gift, give God thanks for all that we have received and which we now offer for the work of ministry. We pray together, gracious God, by the power of the Spirit who sanctified the mother of your Son, make holy all we offer you this day. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer, Form 3. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, great God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the fullness of time came among us in our flesh and opened to us the way of salvation. Now we watch for the day when he will come again in power and great triumph to judge this world, that we without shame or fear may rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please sit or kneel as you are able. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming again in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
in the fullness of time reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation the head of the church and the author of our salvation by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The gifts of God for you, the people of God, thanks be to God. body of Christ given for you. Take this in remembrance that Christ has died for you. Continue to feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ given for you. Take this in remembrance that Christ has died for you. Continue to feed on him in your heart by faith and always with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
this time, I would like to invite anyone who would wish to come forward to receive prayers or to pray for birthdays or anniversaries or any other occasion or need uh, to do so at this time. Friends, please stand and let us now, in the words of the prayer after communion, Give God thanks for all that we have received through this Eucharistic gathering, all that we have been able to offer, and for the privilege of being able to say yes to his will and his word in our lives. We pray together saying, Faithful God, in this sacrament we receive the promise of salvation. May we, like the Virgin Mary, be obedient to your will, we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. We say together, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. There you go. And a very warm welcome to all of you. And again, an especially warm welcome to those who are joining us now via our live stream. Uh, we are delighted to have you with us. Uh, just a few quick notices as we move forward into the season of Advent, into this fourth week of Advent. Uh, just a note that we continue with our online offerings. And so I encourage you to, to join in, to plug in, to make sure that you stay connected uh, even during these times when we cannot gather corporately as we would wish to do. And so I invite you to join us for morning prayer uh, tomorrow morning, once again, uh, all through this week uh, at 7.30. Uh, join us for evening prayer this evening at 6 p.m. also. Uh, all the connection details, as I've said, are on our parish website. Uh, you just go on and click and you'll be able to, to join us. This afternoon at 4 p.m., uh, please make a special note. Our young people will be telling us the Christmas story. Uh, this will be our virtual Christmas pageant. Uh, this is new territory, not just for us, but you know, for many churches at this time, when we cannot have a gathering much larger than what you see here today. And so uh, I encourage you to log on uh, to, uh, to, to watch the virtual pageant this afternoon at 4 p.m. It is the Zoom link, so the same uh, link that you will use to, to, to gather for morning prayer or evening prayer or Bible study. Uh, it is there on our website, and I encourage you to do so as we listen in and support our young people and our children today as they retell this Christmas story. Our Bible study will resume, will continue this week, uh, we will meet on Wednesday and not on Thursday. Uh, we'll meet on Wednesday this week and also next week. Uh, we normally meet on a Thursday, but this Thursday will be Christmas Eve. Next Thursday will be New Year's Eve, and so we'll be having our services on those evenings. So join us on Wednesday uh, this week and next week uh, for our Bible study as we continue our study, um, Surprised by Hope, being led by retired Anglican Bishop N.T. Wright. Our dads will continue to meet this coming Saturday at 8 a.m., and so I encourage you uh, to join us for that. Um, on that note, on Christmas Eve, we will gather virtually uh, at 10 p.m., and then again New Year's Eve at 10 p.m. again. Um, I've sent out an email, so many of you should have already received it. Um, if you have hymns that you would like to, to sing, I know we have our favorite Christmas hymns, uh, if you would have hymns that you would like to, to sing or to, to hear sung on that evening, please let us know by Tuesday of this week so that we can make sure that those are included uh, when we gather on Thursday evening 
uh, for our Christmas Eve service. And also, I'm asking you to send um, either an audio greeting, a recorded audio greeting, or video greeting is even better if you're able to do it. A simple cell phone recording will do fine. Um, a greeting to the parish. So uh, we cannot be physically here to greet one another in person and, and hug and kiss, um, but I encourage you to, to send a Christmas greeting to the members of your parish family uh, so that that can also be a part of our online gathering on Thursday evening. And so if you can uh, have that to the office by Wednesday, by the end of day Wednesday, uh, then we'll be able to, to include that in the service as well. So a little bit of homework uh, for you to do between now and this Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, we have a tentative service of Holy Confirmation plan for the 3rd of January. Uh, we are uh, hopeful and anticipating and praying that we will be able to gather. Uh, if, we will, if we are able to do so, uh, Bishop Jenny will be with us on that afternoon. It is at 4 p.m. And uh, we continue to pray for Ethan and for Chris and for Brian uh, as they prepare uh, for that day. And of course, uh, it is tentative because it depends on uh, how things change in terms of the restrictions and, and what we can or cannot do. And so uh, that service is tentatively planned for January 3rd at 4 p.m. Our Saints Cafe, which has been doing a tremendous work uh, during the time of this pandemic, uh, will take a break uh, this, coming, this coming week and will be uh, on break for two weeks. Okay, so they will resume in the first week uh, of January. Uh, that said, I am delighted to, to say that we, and you, you probably heard the bell ringing from time to time, uh, we're receiving donations of food items uh, that we, in turn, uh, will distribute uh, to the vulnerable members of our community. Uh, this year, we have been promised in excess of 200 meals, um, and so I encourage you to continue to, to pray uh, for those who will be receiving those meals today, immediately following the service but also uh, to the coordinator and volunteers and all those who, sit, who assist with the Saints Cafe uh, in continuing this effort and this great outreach to our community. This year, as I've said, we've also, in terms of outreach, we've also been able to partner with uh, Prison Fellowship and the Angel Tree Program. And again, thank you to everyone who has made uh, donations, to those who have been praying for the families, uh, to those who have helped to make deliveries, uh, to those who have purchased gifts. Uh, all of the gifts uh, have already gone out, and so we give God thanks uh, that we can support uh, 11 children across six families. Uh, if you would still like to make a donation to the program uh, to help to offset the cost of the gifts that have been purchased, uh, I encourage you to do so. Uh, we have been asking for a gift of between $35 to $50 uh, per child, and so if you would like to do that, uh, there is still an opportunity to do so. Those celebrating birthdays this week, we want to remember uh, for Lami Key, along with Dwight Rose Green, our own Dwight, uh, who will be celebrating uh, tomorrow on the 21st of December. Uh, Jonathan Collins and Estasia Giscom will be celebrating on Tuesday of this week. George Barnett, along with Jean Bercy, uh, will be celebrating on the 23rd, that is uh, Wednesday of this week. Uh, Pauline Arms, Arm Bursley, along with Tiana Walters and Deandra Edwards, uh, will be celebrating on Saturday. And uh, so lots of birthdays during this time of year as well. And so we continue to pray uh, for these persons as they prepare to mark another anniversary of their birth. Friends, please stand. We now listen to our recessional hymn, Joy to the World, a reminder of our Savior who comes to us as a babe, who will return to us as our Savior, Lord, Judge, and King, even as we have uh, lit that fourth candle today, the candle of joy. We sing, we listen, as we hear Joy to the World.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.